So I shall now turn you back into the hands of my beloved leader and teacher, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, as I say to you again in the Arabic words of peace, Assalamu alaikum. Do we have another one? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we could uh, stay here all this afternoon listening to these young sisters. Yes, Islam has plenty for you. In fact, about it, we have a whole new heaven and a new earth for you. <laughs> That's what we have. <laughs> we can't use the press world for our world. We want the world of peace, and we want the world of unlimited progress. Therefore, God Almighty has said through the mouth of his prophets that he will destroy this world. And he would set up a world of righteousness, a world of justice, a world of equality, a world of peace. That world will last forever. There will be no end to that world. But the world of evil and confusion will have only limited time to live. That world, life was limited to 6,000 years. That world is the white man's world. Right, right, yes. And declare you of everything. No, I'm not here to preach against no one. I'm here to just tell the truth. <laughs> Again, I said the white man built a great world within the short time of six thousand or four thousand years. He had six thousand years to build a world and to uh, make slaves out of all of us, if he possibly, possibly could. He made slaves out of about ninety percent of all dark people of the earth. For six thousand years he has ruled ninety percent of the population of the planet. That's right there, Father. Uh, I would say that uh, he did have the chance to do so. But 4,000 years he has not uh, any time, brother. <laughs> Don't say that he went to sleep. He didn't go to sleep. After he was brought out of the cave in hillsides of Europe 4,000 years ago, he went on to the top. He came out of the cave. Right, right. Yes, sir. Remember this. Just a minute, be quiet, and don't get happy over what I'm saying. <clears throat> Just take on your own condition. <clears throat> this is only the history. But 2,000 years, the white race was in the caves and hillsides of what is now called Europe. And uh, he made no history in those days. Why he was there, he was punished for starting a lot of trouble among the uh, people of Islam in the Holy Land. Uh, he is the one that is referred to as Adam, that was driven from the Garden of Paradise. That is the white race. They are the Adamic people. They were driven out from among us 6,000 years ago after they had uh, uh, returned from a little small island in the aging sea after their father 
had drafted them out there on a small island in the Aegean Sea from a number of 59,999 dark people uh, that his father carried out there with him for experiment purpose. He experimented on this 59,999 black men and women for 600 years. At the end of 600 years, he grafted the white race, as they are called, by you. From uh, that 59,999 black people, their father, while he was studying germs in the laboratory around 18 years of age, he was around 18 years old, he learned that in the black man there were two people, a brown one and a black one. And uh, <clears throat> while studying the two germs, he gotten the idea that if I can separate, pardon me, if he could separate the two germs, the brown one from the black, and wrap this brown germ into its last state, he could make a white man. And uh, he said the only way to do that I will have to kill the black one and save the brown one until I can drive the brown one into another color. Yellow, red, from those other two colors, I will carry them into the final state, which will be pale white. By killing the darker one off all the time, not allowing the lighter one to marry on to the darker one. Keep the lighter one married on to the lighter one until uh, they produce the baby that you call white. After producing a white baby, there would be no other color that you could get from the black germ. That would be the last stage of the black joint. In fact about it, you will have no more black. You will have no more brown. You will have no more yellow or red. That will be a new person altogether. The white one became not of body. After being grafted, he became not one of either of these. Black, brown, yellow, or red. The fifth color became an, in, pardon me, an independent color then to itself. There would be no other color that you could get from the black germ. That would be the last stage of the black germ. In fact about it, you will have no more black. This is the way this race was created. Not from the dust of the earth, as you have a symbolic picture in Genesis there and in the Holy Quran. This is only to hide the real secret uh, of uh, the making of the man. And the dust uh, can be considered uh, the low, uh, humble organ of the man. He was made from a very low, uh, weak, uh, humble part of a strong. Now the black germ is stronger than the brown germ. The black germ is the original. The browner is little weaker than the black. What happened to the black after uh, the father of the Caucasian race? He was called Caucasian after he had been grafted out of the darker people. Caucasian means this with us, weak bone and stale face. After being grafted out of the black man, he became weak 
physically, and his color became a steel color to us. We call it steel face. <clears throat> and the, uh, uh, the actual frame work of the man and the entire physical form <clears throat> was, not became, but was weaker than that which it was crafted from. Any time that you graft anything out of the original, the graft it is weaker than the original. Take the donkey from the, uh, uh, pardon me, yeah, <clears throat> from the heart. He's weaker, uh, we call the mule, from the donkey and the horse. He's weaker than the horse. Is that right? He's not a horse, but he's something grafted out of the horse. Is that right? All right, then. Let us move on. Take the orange, lemon, and the grapefruit. The grapefruit is not <clears throat> as good a fruit as the orange, nor the lemon. Is that right? Why? Because it's grafted. It is a grafted fruit from the two. Well, now, this is very easy. And you have a reading in the Bible concerning the races under uh, the olive tree, the original olive tree, and the wild grape olive that has been grafted into the tree and has ruled the tree for a time. Now, this is only symbolic talk, and it's only referring to the white race. The white race was grafted out of the original dark people and then made to rule the tree that it came from. And they have ruled the tree that they came from for the last 6,000 years. Now, <clears throat> I say I give them credit for what they have done, and that is the way of the original man is to try out everything. He has been an experimenting God ever since he had a universe. We are not the people that will sit still and wait. We always is trying out a new thing, experimenting on the heaven, experimenting on the people, experimenting on the birds, the elements, and everything. As the white man have that same knowledge. The white man have experimented on all life. There is no life that he has not experimented on. Is that right? Everything that uh, life that comes within his knowledge, he taken that life and experimented on it and he brought it under control. Is that right? You have it in the Bible that Adam was given the uh, power to rule everything. That's the white race. And they were to rule everything and subdue it or make it to bow to them, even the fish of the sea. And that's right. The white man has even tamed the fish of the sea. He has tamed every element that he uh, captured. He has made that element to bow to his power. Is that right? and his wisdom. He has made the bird to bow to his wisdom. Is that right? He has made everything to submit to his authority. Go, Adam, and <clears throat> everything shall bow through you. Now, in the Holy Quran, he said, even the angels were asked to submit to Adam. And they all submit. Is that right? Submit it how? It would be uh, absolutely sin for God to tell the angels of heaven to follow a sinful man. Now, how is this sin, Muhammad? It is not that they was uh, asked to submit and do as uh, Adam say, or uh, his race tell them to do a beast. But what is meant there, these angels, means the great scientists of that us that you read of there in the Genesis, in the Holy One, 
Thereby, uh, pardon me, the Holy One reads, we, we created the heavens and the earth. We created man. We know what man's heart even suggests to him. We are the makers of the heavens and the earth. We, not I, but we. That's the way this Holy One reads. They tell me that I don't speak Greek, nor read Greek, but they tell me the Greek Bible used the same, we. All right, now let us look and find this uh, solution to our problem right in this word, we. If we, I say, understand the truth today, that we was voice, we will be the last. We went to sleep, slept 6,000 years, and allowed Adam and his race to rule. Now, Adam and his race have ruled us 6,000 years, right? What are we going to do now? Go back and pray to Adam to rule us six more thousand years? Are you asking Muhammad to submit to Adam when Adam's time is out? No, Muhammad is not going to do that. This is Muhammad's day. <laughs> yes, I repeat, this is Muhammad's day. <laughs> Muhammad is a name of God which means praise worthy. One that is praised and praised much. That is God. Now, it is God's day. It is time for God to rule. Thou wert the first. Are you what in the beginning? Think over your Bible in the Revelation. Thou wert the <coughs> beginning. You are the end. You are the first and you are the last. Why should not you take to your own self the power to rule? Hmm? It is time that you should rule. Adam has raised enough hell. Adam has broke the peace on uh, the planet. He has did his work. He has completed his work. He has... Uh, uh, made uh, mischief in the land. He has caused bloodshed. He has uh, wrote a history of wars and bloodshed. He still is fighting. He still is shedding blood. He still is causing mischief to rise up in the land. He has did his job. Why fought Adam? Hmm? I said, to you and I, we don't have any right to argue and, and quarrel with white people. They have completed their work. And if they live here a million years, they will do the same. They don't have any other way of doing anything else. Huh? They were not made to bring about peace on the earth. It is not in their nature to bring about peace. You call that I teach you. They have all the lessons that I give to you. They have them in their office. There is nothing that I teach what they don't know. So uh, it's all right, I guess, with them to pay you to continue to sit around. But I say to you, Mr. Black uh, Agent, and Miss, and Miss Black Agent, that you need to come up on front and have your name signed on the book of Islam that you may see the era. That's what you need to see. <laughs> they boast that they have the each all the time. One FBI agent said one day, he says, I was at the temple Sunday, meaning his uh, stool pigeon. He always boasts that they have uh, our people that dumb to stool on each other. That makes a fool out of you and I. To accept 10 cents or 10 million dollars to stool on one another. 
It makes you a fool and an unfit member for your own nation. <laughs> but one good thing about it, I have nothing to hide. The white race has uh, built a civilization. They have come up out of the caves. They stayed there in the cave for 2,000 years without any divine guidance until the birth of Moses. Moses was the first divine leader that the white man had since the creation of Adam. And uh, he put them on the road to conquer it the civilization of the planet Earth. And they called Moses their emancipator, and uh, they never forget him. That's right, and they should not. This man, Moses, found the white race in the king. They were walking on their own foes 4,000 years ago. That's what uh, <coughs> Moses found. I know you want to question me plenty now about Moses' history. But uh, I am prepared to give you every word of it and the last word of it and the meaning of all of it. I have been taught the knowledge of all of it. Now, <clears throat> it is up to you to do that in time when we have more time and not this afternoon. But I want to say to you that this race of people, I'm not out here trying to make you to hate. I'm not trying to make you hate anyone. I'm only teaching you the truth. I would like that you hate a lie and love the truth. But as far as the white race, you are welcome to go along with them and love them, do as you please about them. Marry them if they want to marry you. Live with them as long as they're on the planet if you want to. I'm not uh, taking anything to do with that. I'm only telling you the truth. And you who will accept the truth, you are mine, and I'm going to separate you from them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want anything uh, that they said that is there. I don't want to marry them, nor do I want my children to ever marry them. I don't want them trying to marry my children. I don't want them to sweetheart with any of us. I don't want to change my color, and I know they don't want to change theirs. So I said the most best policy that ever could be established and carried out to the very letter and spirit that is to keep black man and white man separated. What right you and I look like want to be white? If God had wanted us to be white, he would have made us white. <laughs> what right do the white man want to be black? His nature don't teach him that. His nature teaches him to be the color that he found himself in and try and rule black. That was the nature put in him to rule the black man. And he has <coughs> been doing a successful job of it. But happened today uh, that you and I are living in, there came another that is greater than the uh, father of the Caucasian race. Caucasian, remember, means weak bone and stale face. After being grafted out of the black man, the white man uh, became white, and he, <clears throat> but he had no more black eyes. His eyes appeared blue. This is not, say, real blue eye. It is the <clears throat> reflection of the civilization of that man in the blood. The blood is not blue. It is red, like yours and mine. But there is a reflection of blue showing their weakness through the grafting of that man in his eyes. 
You find it in the Holy Quran <clears throat> here. Uh, <clears throat> well, on page uh, <clears throat> 636 of Muhammad Ali's uh, translation of the Holy Quran, I think it's in 1922 uh, or 25, any one of those translations, you will find it. It says, I rather refer to the white man as the blue eye that God would yuck on the day when the trumpet is blown. We, the Holy One, say we will gather the guilty blue eye, making a distinguish in the people. In the Bible, you have lots of parables. It says that in one parable, that Jesus make parable of the world. Uh, the white man's world has been tapped that has grown among wheat. And that uh, like the, uh, the uh, harvester or the uh, husband gathers this uh, fruit or this farm of wheat, when harvesting time comes around, he takes that wheat grain and he goes and thrash the husk away from it and he takes the wheat kernel, makes flour out of it. Grinds the grain up and makes flour, is that right? All right. Well, he takes that home and puts it into a barrel or in a sack. He protects that, is that right? But the, uh, the husk or the bread, he threw it away. That little shuck on the grain of wheat. He threw it away, is that right? right? He didn't want to eat that. Well, he's showing you a picture of two people. The people that will be destroyed is the people that is less in both physical and mental than the original. And the original must be taken in to the protection of God that that particular original that is among the tax. Yes. That must be saved, but the tax must be burned. All of this is a, a true picture of the two races. Among the you and I today there is both black and white. But the judgment is seeking to judge with justice upon the two races, is that right? That's right? But really the judgment is set to clear one and to condemn the other. Again, he makes a parable of uh, the two races as being sheep and goats. That's right. The goats to the left, which means uh, to the wrong side, or evil side, or to the weaker side. To the left of us is weak. Uh, hanging over here, uh, uh, arm is weaker than the right. So he made a picture of the two races there, in the goat and the sheep. The sheep here to my right and the goat to my left. I don't want the goat, but I want the sheep. I will eat the sheep. I will use the sheep's wool to make clothes, to cover my uh, <coughs> body and to warm my body. And I will put his flesh on the inside to strengthen the body. Is that right? All right, but I can't use the goat. I don't like the goat. Hmm? I don't like his flesh. He don't have much of a wool here that I like. And I don't like the goat. I can't trust the goat. He's always getting into uh, making mischief. Is that right? He will chaw all of my laundry off the uh, line out there. He will eat anything. Is that right? You just can't feed the sheep anything. Artificial food, you just can't give it to the sheep. No, you've got to give the sheep the right food. Is that right? But the goat over here will eat anything. So it is with the uh, Caucasian race. They will eat anything. But the Muslim people won't eat anything. Hmm? Uh, the white race or the Caucasian race is forbidden to eat swine. 
but they will eat it and call it their Friday dish. Is that right? The Muslim people will not allow you to bring a hog on their uh, a territory. If this is the Muslim territory here, they will not allow you to bring a swine on their territory. And the Jews was uh, uh, forbidden to eat this flesh or to even touch this flesh. Now the Christian people gobbles it down and even try to find some defense for eating it in the Bible. But I don't think they have anything. But yet they try to say that when Jesus comes, he didn't condemn anything. Hmm? That uh, That is the old Moses law. Now let us see, Jesus said when, uh, when that he was talking, as we understand what it actually means, but this is the way it reads. When he was talking to the demons, <clears throat> or rather found the demons in a man, that he would like that man to be cleared of these things. So they cried out to Jesus and said to Jesus, <clears throat> uh, Do not destroy us before our time. Uh, if you take us out of the man, give us another place. Send us into the swine. And the Jesus <clears throat> did them to go into the swine. Now, if Jesus sent the evil demon into the swine, would he then tell his disciples to go out there, fatten the swine, and eat him? Do we would have to go and clean that spirit out of the a disciple again, is that right? The disciple will still be <coughs> tormented with that same evil spirit. Right. Hmm? But white people eat the swine. White people break all the laws of God. There is nothing that they don't uh, do that the Bible forbids them not to do. In fact about it, the Bible is not forbidding uh, them not to do these evil things. It is forbidding you and I not to do it because we are the children of the righteous. The Bible says, Thou shalt not uh, <clears throat> drink wine. Thou shalt not look on it. Is that right? Thou shalt not touch the swine. Not even catch the carcass of a swine, not to think over eating it. That's right. Right? That's right? Okay. The biggest Christian is America's look like today. And the greatest swine eaters there's on the earth. That's right. Hmm? That's right. That's right. The, the teachers of Christianity, the teachers of the Bible, all have hog in the home, in, in their stomach. Huh? Okay, then, uh, uh, don't say that uh, uh, you don't care nothing about what he says. Oh, yes, I will. I'll make you. I will make you care something about what I say. You said that you're a Christian. You said that you live for Jesus. Jesus did not eat hard. Jesus did not drink intoxicating drink. Jesus did not chew tobacco or smoke tobacco. Jesus did not get drunk. Jesus didn't rob. Jesus did not lie. Jesus did not commit adultery. Jesus did not break peace in home, or did he go to war against nations? Right? All right, then, what kind of Christian are you? Are you really a Christian? Are you really Jesus, the followers? Are you the Christ follower? Who followers are you? Hmm? I see the liquor everywhere. I see uh, 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 hog everywhere. On the priest table, he eats hog. I see the priest drinking liquor. I didn't come here to make you angry. I just come to tell you the truth. The nation of Islam is against that. All right, Muhammad, come on, tell us some more and get through. Yes. <clears throat> Jesus did not murder no one. Hmm? Why are 
are the Christians such terrible murderers? Then? Christians made them Christians. Christians declare war on Christians. Is that right? Christians lie on Christians. Christians go and stick up Christians. Rob Christians. Rob the banks of Christians. Christians robbing Christians. Christians go and take each other's wives away from Christians. Is that right? Christians enslave Christians, right? You are a black Christian, and you are enslaved to white Christians. The Bible teaches you to love your uh, neighbor as thyself, right? Are you a neighbor in America or not? Hmm? You're not a neighbor. Therefore, the white race can't love you because you are not their neighbor. Huh? Certainly not. Come on and agree with me, writer. If you were their neighbor, they would allow you to live in any uh, part of the city or the country that they live in without stoning your house or without shooting up your house. Is that right? If you were their neighbors, they would not be out in Little Rock <laughs> throwing stones and with a standing army out there to keep <clears throat> the white race, the white students, or the white citizens of Little Rock from killing your sons and your daughters. Mm -hmm. You say, I don't want no teachings of Elijah because he teaches race hatred. Mister, let me tell you one thing here this afternoon. <laughs> Since you are such good black Negro and love everything but another black Negro, if I'm teaching hate, what is that out in Little Rock? What is that in Chicago? If I'm teaching hate, what is that in Harlem? Huh? Why are the police beating the head of your black brother in Harlem? Why are they beating your head everywhere? Is that love for you or hate? If I'm teaching uh, you to love yourself as you should as a brother, you don't charge me with teaching hate among you. Huh? What are you arguing about then? If I teach you that you and I should love each other as brothers, fight and die for each other as brothers, be in unity as brothers, defend our brother and our brother's wife, and <coughs> he, in turn, try and defend mine, defend our woman, protect our woman, and love your black brother as you love your black self. If I teach you that, can you say I'm teaching hate? No. What are you charging me with hate? What are you charging me with hate teaching? Here a few weeks ago, every skirt, rabbit slut like man jumped up after me, calling me a hate teacher. And for 25 years, I've been teaching you, you never call me a hate teacher until a white man called me one. <laughs> as soon as 
Yes, they branded me as a hate teacher. They didn't have to publish that but one time. You never have tried to say anything of the good that I'm doing for you. But you've taken a hold of all the evil that they charged me with. Flying through the street. Closing your door. Them as old race hate people. What race are we teaching you to hate? If we are teaching you to love yourself, and we are proving it, here I have thousands of followers throughout the country. Hundreds of thousands. What are you talking about? I'm teaching hate. How can I teach hate to these people? Now the trouble of it is with you. You want the white man to know that I'm a black nigger and I'm on your side because I would like to be a white person like you. <laughs> I'm so sick of a lot of old coward people, I don't know what to do. <laughs> sitting around in our midst to run back and tell the white man he's seeking hate. He thinks that you the devil. I want to say to you, I'm not teaching you to hate the white man. Love him, mister. Love, love, love. Love him. And it's up to you. But I'm telling you that that day is over and I don't see that sun rising anymore. as teaching that the doom of the white man could be made a charge against Muhammad while all of his white disciples is teaching their own doom. Every uh, sane white uh, scientist today will say that the white man's day is done. Everyone, they know that time is up. Here comes a, a white black lover here. He will say, it's a shame. He's out there teaching that the white people will be destroyed. My good white man. And what we bad niggas is going to do if our good white man is destroyed. I say, go talk to God about this thing. He said that they would be destroyed at the end of 6,000 years through the mouth of all of his prophets. You have it in your Bible in your home. I'm not adding anything. Not taking anything away from the prophet. <laughs> if the white man's time is up, it is up. <laughs> and if I tell you it is up, Mr. Fool, and you don't want to believe it's up, keep going around. It don't make me no difference. being beaten, walked upon, spit upon, linked, buried, weighted down in chains and balls of iron, sold from one plantation to another for three long centuries. Now overnight you love your slave master. So well that you defy God to even talk about removing them from the planet. And will kill all of his prophets and messengers if they talk about the white man is not to live forever. Or uh, that the white man is the devil. Even though God says so, don't you say so. Because I love it. Love it, mister. Love it. But go back and read it. The Bible says that the devil will be destroyed and all of his followers.
some of the most educated of our people writing in the paper. He uh, uh, calls them bad name. I don't go for that. What have you been called? If the white man is called the devil and God says the devil is not a bad name, it's his real name. I don't care where he's from. He can be from New York of England, or he can be from Harvard, Yale, or Smith University. I don't care where you are from, Mr. White Man. Any white scholar wants to contend with me that the race is not a, not self. By nature, I'm willing to be hung out there on the street. 60 feet in the air and dropped by every inch of those 60 feet to the earth. I will prove to them they are a race of devils. They are that. Who, who knows any better than Allah? Who knows any better than you and I? Who have suffered at their hands for 400 years? Who knows any better? According to their own language, any wicked being is a devil. Huh? And they are the chief wicked being. When Yahoo made him, that's the name of the father who drafted the Caucasian man, referred to in the Bible in many places as Joe, a Jacob. Uh, the Arab for that name is Yahoo. He uh, grafted these people, and when he grafted them out of us, he taught them evil. He taught them to kill. He taught them to uh, rule uh, you and I by tricks and to make us believe a lie to be the truth and the truth to be a lie. He taught them that. And the Bible teaches you that is the nature of the devil. He's against the God of truth. And the Bible teaches you when God comes, or uh, when the Son of Man comes, or uh, when they see him in the uh, uh, clouds of the heaven, the nation will mourn. They will be angry, is that right? The wrath of the nation will come. They will be against the Son of Man, is that right? Why? Because they don't want him to destroy their wicked work. All praise is due to Allah. This race have saw this sign, or rather they see the sign of the Son of Man in the heavens today. They see the signs. They are preparing to try to conquer space in order to destroy <laughs> the Son of Man and his army that is coming against them. But that is impossible. How is it impossible, Elijah? It is very much impossible. By the twinkling of the eye, the Son of Man will cut a solid into gravity Turn everything on fire, and you won't have a possible chance to let go of your bum or even to rise one thing. Just one thing. I want you to know the truth. It is time that you know the truth. It is time that you and I unite. I don't uh, have nothing against uh, the uh, undersecretary or the secretary of the NAACP, uh, Mr. Bell. I think he <coughs> spoke well or wrote well. I don't have nothing against it. I do think that we, the Muslims and the NAACP, I do think that we have the same mind in a way and is working for <coughs> towards the same goal. The NAACP was originally organized to seek justice for the black man. Is that right? And they are still seeking justice after 50 years being organized, right? And they are still getting injustice, right? We also is the brother of those, all right? We don't say that we are against the NAACP. No, no. We are with the NAACP in their program for justice. For the black man, for the so-called Negro, national, 
association uh, the, for the advancement of colored people, because I will remove that last name, color. I'm not after advancement for colored people, I'm after the advancement for black people. <laughs> But I say to the, N the black NAACP, don't think we Muslims is against you. You are only the body and the foot members. The only thing that we are against is your head. You don't have the head that belongs to the body. Can a black body uh, <clears throat> be successful with a white head? That's against nature, is that right? All right then. If you will just get the head that belongs to your body, you will find all the Muslims with you. Though we are not going to interfere with your, with your way. You keep your head if you like it like that. But we have the head that belongs to our body. You will never be able to get freedom, justice, and equality from your slave master. Not as long as he is a member of the white race. It is not in their nature. They will not take their razor and cut their throat. If they give you freedom, justice, and equality, that's like them pulling out a razor out of their pocket, slashing their own throat. So wake up, black brother. Wake up, black sister. Wake up, black brother. Wake up, black father and mother. Let's get together. Let you and I get together. You need names. You need to be re-educated. You need your own nation's name. You need to get out of the white man's name. You say, I'm nothing to a name. Just stick around for a few days and you will find out. <laughs> you will find out. Why is it that the white people after a hundred years so-called liberation of you from the service of slavery? Look, the other day, I saw in the paper where uh, the white uh, man was calling me Mr. Pooh. I wonder why in the world he wanted to call me Mr. Pooh for. <laughs> he said, uh, 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 he just taken the name Muhammad, but his right name is Pooh. If right name is, is Pooh, is my name, then I should be a white man. Mr. Pooh. Think over that, calling me Mr. Pooh. He wanted me to be himself so bad. He would like that I be uh, uh, Mr. White Pooh. But I'm not white. I don't call myself after white people. What I look like representing myself after white people when I'm not white. But they would like that you do so. What is the secret? reason for that. They know that this is the end of their time. They know that you will go to hell with them if you stay in their name. Therefore, they want you to stay in their name and not come in no such name as Muhammad, Kareem's and Diaz because such names have a future forever on this planet Earth. They know these names will live forever. But they know too Jones, Brown, Cold toppers and whatnot is going to pass away with this world. They know that. So they are trying to deceive you, and you are fool enough to hope my name is Sam Jones. Mr. Foolish Black Sam Jones. Don't know his own name. 
boasting that he's the slave of white Sam Jones. With the arm full of diplomas and degrees, here he goes, I am Sam Jones' American Negro. With all of those degrees, he has not as yet learned that he's not Sam Jones, nor is he the Negro. The name don't mean anything. And the Bible teaches you, everyone, bring everyone that is called by my name. And all that had the name of the beast went down with the beast. But everyone that had the name of the Lamb's father, he went in. Is that right? Bring everyone, I say, that, that is called by my name, and I will give them a name after my name. I will give them a, a name that shall live. I will give them a name that will not pass away. As I live, praise the Lord, so shall my name live. Is that right? All praises to the Lord. I said, my friend, wake up. You are in love with a nation whose time is up, whose day has expired and the sun has set. I said, my friend, I call you to your own nation. I'm not asking you to hate them. Love them if you want to. But I say, all that love them, all that want to go along with them, shall go to a hell far with them. Yes. God has said to me that he was going to burn every one of them. I'm not saying them this out of their hearing. I'm saying this in their hearing. I know they'll listen to me. God has said he would burn every one of them and burn up all that they have created and he will build a new civilization altogether. I'm sorry. I was too late. The time is just about up. I want to say to you, I have a letter here that I must read. But I feel like that. I wished I had a little more time. But I said, please, please, please take note. You are too proud. You have your diploma in your education, and you think that you should be white. You are too proud. The white man's education has made you too proud. So proud until you hate your own stuff and your own kind. I say you need to be re-educated into the knowledge of your stuff and your kind now. Learn something about your own black people. You say, I don't see nothing uh, the black man has done. I want to say to you, we are the makers of everything. Ask the white man, where did he get his learning? Huh? Ask him that. All that he know, he got it from us. If we have made anything, look under your feet. Look above your head. Look around you. See, don't you see some objects? Ask us who made them. Ask us who made this that you stand on. We are the makers of everything. You have nothing. What is this world? As the Holy One teach you and I, it is nothing but a world of sport and play. Nothing to it. Nothing coming in about it. We make worlds of worlds. Stick around and see. <laughs> that they have come for the truth. The poor black man is bone a coward under the white man's lash. Lashing him night and day, shooting him down in his family, just to frighten his, the members of his family to not dare disobey him. Go walk into his home and shoot the father or the mother down. Beat them all to death right there in the midst of the children. In order to make these children come up here in white man. I say, my friend, Islam will take that fear out of you. 
God over in Islam will remove that fear. I don't have any fear. I don't care if I was late this afternoon, I would not be late fearing. I would not yet fear the lynching because I do know <laughs> he who is behind me have power over him. <laughs> Come, uh, one of you here, pardon me, the time is up. We have to, have to get out of here and uh, <clears throat> I do love to teach the truth. I do love to see you come out to listen to the truth. But I said to you, my friend, you are sitting here. I must tell you this before you go. You are sitting here listening for something that will be good for you today and tomorrow. I said to you, my beloved brothers and sisters that is sitting here before us this afternoon, that you need the hope. One of them, number one thing uh, needs that you uh, need today. It is a home. You don't have no home. You ain't America at the mercy of the American white man. You don't have no home here. If he sells you a home, he can go and bum it and shoot it up if he wants to. Or take you out to all and lynch you. You don't have no home here. I say you and I need to unite Get a home on this earth that we can call our own home. You need some of this big old earth. There is 57, pardon me, 200, no, 57 million, 255,000 square miles of land sticking out of what? You don't have none of that. I said to you, the white man robbed the Indian of this country. Killed the Indian and taken it away from him. All right, the old Indian had been here for 16,000 years. White man was created 6,000 years ago. The Indian had 10,000 years. And years ago, the Indian had 10,000 years uh, here as a citizen before ever the creation of the white man. We drove him, him out of uh, East India, walked him across the cold, icy, barren straight into the Western Hemisphere. But disobedience there, 16,000 years ago. And he's gone. Is that right? By death, he gotten his country by bloodshed. The Bible teaches you, walk unto he that builds a city upon blood. Is that right? You will learn some sense some of these things. <laughs> this is not the white man's home. No. Not even the Western Hemisphere is his home. No. In fact about it, he don't really have no permanent home on the earth. <laughs> you and I need the home. Let you and I get together Get us a home to us up on this old planet Earth and stay out of the white man's house. And then we will, uh, we, we will live in peace, get along uh, with each other in peace, and we will feel more at home when we can look around and see every member in our house, black members. But when we look around in a house and we see black brown, yellow, red, white. These colors all cannot get alone in peace together. They must be separated. In fact about it, the Bible teaches you that God even is as much separated the races one day. Is that right? And that he will in the last day separate the people. Is that right? All right, then what are you arguing about? No white man will talk like that. White man say, stay white, white man. Yeah, the Negro, oh, don't say stay white. Let us be your brother and we all marry together. We're all God's people. We're all from one father. We're not from one father. Our father is not their father. And his father is not our father. 
as the Bible teaches you in John Barry Nate's uh, chapter on the 44th uh, verse, it says that uh, Jesus said, your father is the devil. And if you were the children of Abraham, you would love me. Taking these people out from even the uh, uh, nation of Abraham and even of being the people of the true God. You are the children of the devil. I know your father. Your father uh, <clears throat> was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. And I saw your father fall from heaven. He referred to the fall of Adam from the garden of Eden in those words. And the murder, Adam, was a murder in his children murder. Is that right? And the whole race of the Adamic people today are liars and murderers. Right? If I'm not right, then shoot me down. Then if I'm right, keep me standing up. Now, I want to read a letter here that uh, uh, will probably acquaint you with all of the trouble that is going on in Holland. Who is behind it? Who is behind the, uh, <clears throat> the Times Magazine writing an article in there on me and trying to charge me with hate speech? Here is the author here. He wrote me a letter. And that is... <clears throat> the. Imperial wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. I want one of you to come up here and read this letter that is not a... Oh. Yes, one, Thessalonians 2, 14, 16, St. John's 8, 44, and 48, Christian Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. Arch leader J.B. Stoner, Imperial Wizard, August 6, 1959, Louisville, 4, Kentucky. Sweet B. 702 Barrett Avenue, corner of Barrett and Broadway. National Headquarters, Post Office Box 48, Atlanta, Georgia. Honorable Stephen P. Kennedy, Police Commissioner of New York City, New York, New York. Dif uh, confidential and top secret reference to black Muslims. Dear fellow white man, the Christian Knights of the Ku Klux Klan is composed of all loyal white people both Catholic and Protestant, native born. He said they are composed of all loyal white people. Then when we look at all loyal white people, we are looking at all loyal Ku Klux Klan people. <laughs> native born and foreign born, young and old. We are working to unite all of the forces of the white Christian, Christendom in the struggle to preserve the great white race. To preserve, you, pardon me, just listen to what he said. To preserve the great white race. Who is going to preserve the great black race? <laughs> when you here want to be white. Well, now, who's going to preserve the black man? If you want to go over and, and be white, or let them... Uh, uh, Bob, you and your color, who is going to preserve the black man? God and Elijah will try and preserve them. <laughs> the future of civilization depends upon the survival of the beautiful, intelligent white race, the bearer of Christian truth. I received a report from one of our clansmen on the New York police force informing me that Just a minute. Did you say he, one was on the police force? That's right. I'll re I'll reread it. Oh, yes, sir. I have received a report from one of our clansmen on the New York police force informing me that the nigger Muslims are in rebellion against white law and order. Make a comment. Now, he says that he has received uh, from uh, one of his clansmen that is on the police force uh, that we, the Muslims, pardon me, 
Yeah, we the uh, the nigger Muslims are in rebellion against white law <laughs> and order. I want that uh, leader of the Ku Klux Klan to prove to us one instance where we ever have uh, rebelled against the law of New York. What, on one instance, or anywhere in the country. I wish I could take him to uh, Congress, and he and I sit down face to face with a mic, uh, uh, a national hookup, and let everybody see he and I talk together. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to We would pay a hundred thousand dollars for every hour, for every half an hour, to get that kind of talk to shore up this wicked world. He reports that those blacks have no respect for you honest white Christian policemen. Yes, sir. Now, we have no respect for police force. We are in Chicago for over 25 years. We were in Detroit 10 years. We go all over this country. What police is out there can say to us that we disobey them or their orders? We are the best <coughs> law abiding citizens there is in the country when it comes to making, not making trouble. We don't make trouble. What we look like trying to rebel against the law and order of the country with nothing but our hands. We don't carry knife, gun, pistol, or nothing. We don't teach our followers to carry no such thing. We come to you absolutely without any arm, armed with nothing but the truth. And yet we are the greatest troublemakers in the country, doing nothing but at peace with each other, and yet it's troublemakers. <laughs> that show you who these people are. Move on. Therefore, in the interest of law and justice, I am offering you the support of the Christian Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. Look out, Harlem. <laughs> I read in the paper last week where they had already reinforced the police force. So, better look at them careful. You will see a little badge with the cross on it. I am an expert on the black Muslim and have kept up with their infid infidel, delic activities for many years. From my knowledge of them, I assure you that they are much more dangerous to white Christian rule in New York than you realize. You and I must join forces to stop the black Muslims now, or they will soon drive every white person out of New York City. Very weak. <laughs> the largest city in the world will then be all nigger city of black supremacy, where white black Muslims from conquering New York is for, for my Christian Knights and your New York police to join hands and work together to uphold white Christian supremacy. Without the support of my Christian Knights, the Muslim will continue to force you to retreat until you and the great Mayor Wagner and all other white officials and judges will be ousted from office. <laughs> then he will only allow niggas on the we New York... You, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Without the support of my Christian knights, the Muslim will continue to force you to retreat until you and the great Mayor Wagner and all other white officials and judges will be ousted from office. Elijah Muhammad will then give your job to a nigger and put in a nigger as mayor of New York, New York. Then he will only allow niggers on the New York City Council and all judges and all policemen will be niggers.
By then, the Mazel will have driven all white people out of New York with, without exception. Don't let the black Mazel fool you when they demand entrance to schools in white neighborhoods or demand houses or apartments in white areas. They only wish to enter white neighborhoods and white schools so they can then proceed to drive all the whites out. Take my advice and we will put the nigger, niggers in their place instead of letting them take over New York City and all national power that goes with it. Continued page two, preserve the white race. Page two. Page two. We need to put the black hoodlums out of business. But we must do it in a legal way without, with the police and the courts. As a Georgia lawyer, I insist on doing everything according to law. You know what I mean. It is urgent. <laughs> it is urgent that you persuade the officials of the city of the state of New York to immediately repeal all ordinances and laws that prevent whites from discriminating against Negroes because those evil laws constitute an open invitation to all the niggers in the South to move to New York City, where they will strengthen the Muslim and subject that giant metropolis to black supremacy. Those laws need to, need to be replaced with laws that will help white Christians in New York to in, in, imitate us Southerners by keeping the darkies in their place. You might be interested in knowing that some southern businessmen and farmers are complaining because their darkies are leaving the south and moving to New York where they can get higher pay. Wealthy southerners, wealthy southern housewives are complaining because it is becoming harder to find colored maids and cooks who will work for a dollar per day. They want you to send them back and cut and cut out those high wages for niggers in New York. They are moving to New York in large numbers to work for higher wages on account of your laws against racial discrimination. Remember, every nigger who moves from the South to New York City makes the Muslim more powerful. You need... <laughs> you need to learn more about the evil genius, Elijah Muhammad. Mohammed, or... Just a minute. <clears throat> Elijah Mohammed, or, or you will never stop him and his niggers from taking over your city. He claims to be the reincarnation of that infidelic seventh century prophet, Mohammed, who almost conquered the known world, and he may be, be him because he is much more clever than the other niggers. I, I think we need to put Mohammed out of the business in the legal way and not use the is hiring, with not, not use the criminal methods that the communists if, uh, communist FBI is uh, uh, using against him. I hear that the FBI is hiring Negro pr uh, pimps to join up with the Muslims so they can spy on them. They will, all, they will also start arguments and meetings so as to disrupt them. They also try to turn niggers away from the Islam by accusing Mohammed and other Muslim officials of stealing money out of the Muslim treasury because the FBI knows that the most that most niggers will believe those kind of false charges without any proof, even though I would enjoy seeing Mohammed hang from a Harlem lamppost. I have to admit that he does not steal from his own followers. We are both familiar enough with the red FBI methods to know that the FBI plans to frame the Muslim by having niggers. FBI pimps use violence and then blame it on the Muslims instead of using illegal FBI police state methods. I suggest that we put the Muslim instead, Muslim out of business with, with, the Christ, with the white Christian methods 
that have worked so well in the South besides. And it spies you put among the Muslims and will probably be killed. Those Muslims are the meanest niggas in the world. <laughs> You need to realize that Muhammad has organized several hundred thousand Negroes throughout America. His Muslim, Muslim temple are springing up everywhere. They will, all, they will also start arguments and meetings so as to disrupt them. They also try to turn niggers away from the Islam by accusing Muhammad and other Muslim officials of stealing money out of the Muslim treasury because the FBI knows that, the most, that most niggers will believe those kind of false charges without any proof. Even though I would enjoy seeing Muhammad hang from a Harlem lamppost, I have to admit that he does not steal from his own followers. We are both familiar enough with the red FBI methods to know that the FBI plans to frame the Muslim by having niggers. FBI pimps use violence and then blame it on the Muslim instead of using illegal FBI police state methods. I suggest that we put the Muslim instead, Muslim out of business with, with, the Christ, with the white Christian methods that have worked so well in the South besides. Any spies you put among the Muslims will probably be killed. Those Muslims are the meanest niggas in the world. <laughs> You need to realize that Muhammad has organized several hundred thousand Negroes throughout America. His Muslim, Muslim temple are springing up everywhere. He has several temples in my home city of Atlanta. If you were a student of, student of race, you would know that Christianity is the white man's religion and has only been successful in white countries, whereas the Muslim religion of Islam is a nigger religion which appeals to the nigger, black racial instinct. That is why the Muslim grow stronger every day, even though every nigger that becomes a Muslim will go to hell when he dies. If we, if we fail to stop the Muslim now, the 16 million Negroes of America will all soon be Muslim and then you will never be able to stop them. Report from Christian missionaries say that Islam is sweeping over all the Africa, all of Africa, so don't underestimate the Muslim. Up to, up to and including it, its edition, copyrighted in 1956, the Encyclopedia Britannica admitted that under the heading of Negro, that the nigger is closer to the anthropoid ape than the white man is ever res in every respect except one. It also reveals that the nigger to be natural, born cannibal. For more information about the facts of race, I suggest you read Take Your Choice, Separation, or Mongolization, Mongolization it is, by the late U.S. Senator uh, Bilbo of Mississippi and the White America <laughs> by Ernest Severe Cox. Both are in the Library of Congress. Another valuable race book is The Cult of Equality by Stuart O. Landry, 305 charters. 305 Charters, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. Therefore, you can easily see that your problem is with black savage. We will, we will help you put the blacks in their place before they turn all of your great cities into a bar barbaric jungle. The NAACP is a bad gang, but I assure you that the Muslim are 10 times more dangerous, more dangerous. The NAACP is a cream puff compared to the black Islam. <laughs> the, the NAACP likes white people so much that its members try to associate with us whites every day. But the Muslims think they are better than us whites, even though everybody knows that we, uh, that we whites are superior to the nigger coons. I guess you know that the NAACP is headed by a man who is not a nigger. But there is a bad nigger at the head of the Muslim. <laughs> I have had... <laughs> I've had white Christian friends write to many magazines inciting, inciting them to denounce Muhammad and his Muslim so as to scar or scare yeah. many coward Negroes away from him. So far, I have managed to... Uh, 
Six both Times Magazine and U.S. News and World Report on them. Police Commissioner Kennedy, my dear friend, I now offer you the service of the Christian, Christian Knights of the Ku Klux Klan for the purpose of maintaining white supremacy in New York City and for keeping New York niggers in their place. I think 5,000 Klanmen could clean up Harlem and Harlem for you. If you would give them police badges and New York police uh, Polish uniforms to wear instead of that Klan uniform. They will leave their Klan robes at home so the New York niggas won't know that your police reinforcements are white Christian Klansmen. You can use our Christian night as God to protect every white business in Harlem and also other New York areas where niggas customers are giving trouble to white businessmen. After all, how do the black jigs Jigaboos expect to live without white businessmen to sell them what they need. You can also use our plantsmen to escort white salesmen into Harlem and other parts of New York City that are suffering from the black plague. I will expect you to supply my plantsmen with police pistols so they won't have to carry their own pistols. They will also require machine guns, riot guns, tear gas, and big clubs. They will especially want some big sticks with iron inside the wood so that so they can crack hard niggas' skulls. Niggas, <laughs> niggas have thicker skulls and smaller skulls than we whites. And your police uniform, my clansmen, will teach New York niggas to respect white Christian policemen. I will send my Christian knights to your... Uh, rescue as soon as you call for them. Do you want to keep the plan secret or make them public? If we give publicity to these plans, the yellow livered cowardly darkies would probably start shaking in their shoes and, sh and showing <laughs> proper respect for white people before the arrival of the Ku Klux Klan. Please advise. In case you decide to keep our plan secret, remember that the secret might leak out. In case of a leak, strongly deny that you have called for the support of the Christian Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. I want you to jump up and down and scream when you tell the newspaper men that you are not working together in case our plan leaks out. That will keep them from saying anything. Tell your superiors to take their choice. You can either accept our support and have white supremacy in your giant city, or you can retreat and abandon New York City to Elijah Muhammad. His mausoleum and his black supremacy. I know we will enjoy working together to roll back the black locusts. Together, my dear friend, we will save New York City for the white race, the white, the race that built civilization in the Christian bond of white racial brotherhood. I remain yours truly, yours of Christ, for Christ, race and country. The Imperial Wizard of the Christian Ku Thank you. Uh, brothers and sisters, just a minute. Uh, we thank uh, the brother for uh, reading this letter to you. Our time is just about up here, but here's a letter that he wrote me directly. He sent me a copy of uh, this commissioner's letter. I don't know why he wanted to send me the copy of, of uh, the commissioner's letter. But he sent me also a copy of my letter, but we don't have time to, or, or rather sent to me a letter directly to me. And uh, we don't have time to, re to read this letter, but uh, <clears throat> uh, I will say to you, uh, the brother may read just three lines, or the first paragraph here. <clears throat> In Fidel, I have your black mother on the run, and I will soon put you out of business. That being the case, you don't, you, that being the case, why don't you dissolve your Muslim niggas organization or Islam and tell your darkest to go home and be good niggas and to stay in their place? Mohammed, you don't have a chance against me because I am using other niggas against you. Some niggas work for me for pay and others work for me because they are cowards. And some of them work for me because they know I am right. <clears throat> you will have to admit that I kept you from speaking in Indianapolis recently. For several months, I have been operating out of my special Louisville base to build the Klan stronger in the border states, especially Indiana. Therefore, 
When I heard you were planning to speak in Indianapolis, I drove over to Indianapolis and had a conference with local Klan leaders. They told me I had nothing to worry about because they would, would scare the coward Negroes in Indianapolis, in Indianapolis. They then got prominent people to call on Reverend Harding and other leaders of the nigger community in Indianapolis and, and headed, head you off, and headed you off. We were also able to frighten you and your black friends with the police. Of course, I told them to threaten you with other laws instead of that unconstitutional law that says you can't hate anybody, whatever that means. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, you have uh, <clears throat> heard these letters read and a part of uh, another letter here, which I would like that you heard a whole entire two pages of it. And you will find out that this clan's leader boasts that he have the preachers of the church on his side and that several of them is working directly with him. And uh, I don't think that they actually know that they are working with him, but uh, this is uh, enough for them to learn. And this is enough for you to know what they are doing. They against you. Think over these things. They like to beat your head. They like to kill you. They like to deprive you of justice. They don't want you uh, enjoying the same freedom that they enjoy. They don't want you in a good home. They don't want you in their neighborhood. They don't want you in their country. So why should not you and I unite and get out of their country? Let's get out from among them. Will everyone please hold your seat just for one more minute until our beloved leader and teacher, uh, beloved leader and teacher finishes. Please hold your seat for just a few more moments. Thank you. So this uh, this here this afternoon was mostly to acquaint you with just what was going on and who is the real root hate teacher and the real root troublemaker. I wanted you to know that. We are not making trouble nowhere in this country. We're not trying to make trouble. We don't intend to make trouble. We only intend to try to unite our people, get them together, tell them the truth, and uh, teach them to go for themselves and stop laying around licking white people's boots, begging them for a little piece of bread and a little dime, our job to make a dime. Let us unite and get together, take our black woman to ourselves, and protect her from the white lynchers and from the white rapists. And <clears throat> if we can't do that, then let us go commit suicide ourselves. Because we're not fit to be a, a race of people if we cannot protect ourselves and our woman. We just cannot be uh, fit to be called a race of people. The white people are coming in your own houses today, walking in the street, grabbing up your guns off in the street, raping them, doing whatever they please. Your paper is full of that stuff every week. I tell let you and I unite together beat our children back in the house and stop them from trying to be white children, stop them from mixing with them even as well. Stop our woman from painting her face like white people, stop our woman from dying her hair like white women, stop our woman from rouging her lips like white women, make our woman be our woman. <laughs> Give our home to herself, and then the world will respect you. You can't be respect over here crying to be white, crying to uh, have white people to allow you to marry them. You can't never be respected. Who wants a people like that? And what man is fit to be called a man who will allow his wife to sit right in his face, dye his hair, her hair, like white people's hair, then paint her face like white people? Right there and then I tell my wife, since you want to be one of them, get out of here and go to them and don't never come back this way anymore. <laughs> if a white man saw his wife trying to black her face, blacken her hair, blacken her eyes, and her eyebrows to look like black niggers, he would kill her. I tell my friend, wake up and be a man yourself. 
Stop standing around arguing with each other as soon as a leader rises up among you to help you, you are ready to stone it. And you can try and stone me if you want to. I'm going to try and love and make unity, with, unity for you. You do whatever you want. I'm never going to throw a stone at you. But I have someone behind me that will throw stones at you. So don't, don't bother with throwing stones at this. Bother about trying to make unity among the black men and try to be the black man's brother everywhere you find him on the planet. That's your bet, uh, bet today, is to try to be in unity with all dark people. Stop trying to be in unity with the people that don't want you. They hate you and call you a, a deep black so-and-so and so. Get out of that people's face. Stop begging them to live in their community. Stop moving in their community. Stop sticking your black child up around their white children in their uh, school, forcing them to admit your children. Go ask them to build you a school. Go ask them to give you the textbooks that they have. Go ask them to finance your school until you are able to finance it for yourself. And your children will be better children for the future. Instead of trying to make them stick up over there in a white school where they are stoned, kicked out, cursed, and call all kinds of ugly names. You are a fool for doing so. Trying to break a way in to a man's house that is kicking you out. Get out of his house and go for yourself. This place is large enough for you and I to live on it. <laughs> Ourselves, not in the white man's house. The white man want America, let him have America. Let you and I go elsewhere where we came from. Stop making trouble for yourself and him too. If he's uh, through with you and I, he has freed you and I, let's act like free men. Go for our free self. I thank you. This is our conclusion. Sorry we had to stay up to the last very minute. This is the very minute. Thank you, but all who would like to line up here and give their names to us, that you are joining the unity of the black men, I say, come on up. Come right on up. All of you that would like to join up with us, come on here and take the name as quick as possible. Come on over here. Come on and join up this way. Let's have unity among us. Come on forward, brothers and sisters. Who say clan and not? Everybody that's not registered, please remain in your seat. Come on up and see and shake the hands of Muhammad Elijah Muhammad and prove to him that you are a man and that you're behind a black man. If you think it's time for black men to have their freedom, their justice, their equality, then get behind a man that's standing for black people. Get behind a man that's defending the black man. Get behind a man that is not afraid to put his life out for the black man and the black woman of America, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Those who are not registered, please keep your seat. But if you are a black man and think it's time for black people to get behind black men, stop calling the Ku Klux Klan, then come on.